What to do with the leftover turkey carcass after Thanksgiving? Well, you'd be surprised what a great soup it makes. You put the turkey carcass in a pot, fill it up with water, and this has been boiling for the last three hours. And then from this, we're going to make a, uh, a, a turkey vegetable soup. Carrots, celery, onions. Didn't have to go shopping. Everything left over from making turkey and other things, you just grab. I have a piece of green pepper that's going to go in there also. And I'm going to just let this keep cooking for another hour or two nice low fire just simmering away all you do is just cover the bones put that in there put a couple of bay leaves in there and that's it I'm not using any herbs only bay leaf that turkey flavor is so strong as soon as it started to boil you can smell it throughout the house before figuring the amount of vegetables for the amount of stock, we'll have to strain this and see what we come out with. I'll be happy if I receive, if I get, you don't realize the bones take up a lot of space. I'll be happy if I get two quarts of uh, stock from this. Then I could figure out how much vegetables to dice up. And since we're using leftovers, there's some heavy cream left over from the uh, boiled onions and cream sauce. So I'm going to turn this chicken soup, which you don't have to do because I'm going to make the clear chicken soup. And then at the end, I'm going to add a little more, a little heavy cream and make it a little thicker. Because cream soups are a little thicker than normal soups. After three and a half hours of cooking, that's enough. So now, let's remove all the bones. We're going to pick the bones with the meat. Now, you really couldn't make like chicken salad out of the meat that's left here because this is like dry meat. But what it is good for is to put back into the soup. It's going to be a creamy type soup, or even if it's not. It'll build up the, uh, the volume of the soup. And you really won't notice that the meat, the turkey, is well done because you have everything else being chewed together. I'm going to let this cool down, take this, well that's a good amount I have in there, so I'm going to put it through, <coughs> I'm going to drain it through this uh, chinois, very fine mesh drainer, and see how much I uh, come out with. Came out with exactly three quarts of stock. Just remember, when you bring the, the bones to a boil and then you simmer it, you have to cover it. You don't want this to reduce because if you reduce it and it goes below the level of the bones, you're not extracting all the flavor out of the bones. So very little a simmer for three and a half hours at the, the initial full boil. When it comes to the vegetables, I like a larger dice like that. But it's the preference of who's ever making it. I just feel that you like to see the vegetable on your spoon, not minced up very small and not too, too big. So and when I get done with, with all the vegetables, I'm going to put a little either butter or a drop of oil in there and sweat them up to extract more flavor out of them instead of just dropping them into the soup. And then we have the celery.
To me, the celery is, is the most important flavor in a vegetable soup, more than the carrots and more than the onions. You, you see how important celery is when you make stuffing also. And lastly, the onions. And you know, if you're not comfortable in dicing up vegetables and you have a Cuisinart, just cut them in larger chunks than that, any which way. Use the pulse. And if you get big pieces, small pieces, it really doesn't matter. That makes life easier. I'm just going to put, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in there. Sweat them up, don't brown them. And I'm going to put a a teaspoon of dry oregano and a teaspoon of dry thyme and a few bay leaves. This will extract sweating up with the herbs more flavor out of them. And this will take just a few minutes. Now there's no sense for you to just keep watching that. It makes no sense at all. So what we're going to do, just cover this come back in like five minutes lower the flame the flame the flame nice and low come back in five minutes and we'll see what it looks like well I set my timer and I walked away for five minutes which went fast very quick let's see if it did any damage or what that was perfect that, that's five minutes but that for me is not sweated up enough nice low flame now we're going to cover this and do it for 10 minutes and that'll be it. Now let's see how this looks. Nice aroma coming from this and that was a nice sweat up job but you notice no browning because you put a lid over it keeps all the moisture in there and that's what we wanted. Now all we have to do is add all the stock. And I'm, I'm not going to simmer this for the simple reason if I come out with two quarts of nice, very strong vegetable soup, I'll be happy. So raise the flame. If you feel the amount of vegetables in there, there's too much stock. So reducing this is perfect. While that's cooking, I'm going to be taking what meat there is from here off the bone. So that's going to boil until it... It's better to have less soup in here when it's finished and if there's not enough liquid you can always add to it. You're not adding and taking away the flavor as long as you don't add more than what you see right now. But if you just let this simmer slowly and cover it, you're going to have too much stock and we don't want that. I found a couple of more items in the refrigerator that work well in this, but it's optional. Green peppers I'll throw towards the end, they take only a few minutes to cook, and the scallions when the soup is finished for color and for flavor. Rapid boil like this is good, it'll reduce it, because it only takes about 20 minutes to cook the vegetables. This has reduced about 50%. You could tell where the line was over here, and now we're down to there. Now I'm going to thicken this with, not with a roux, but with whitewash. That's water, cold water, and flour. And the only reason I'm doing this is because there is fat in there and it's the fat 
from the turkey. So if you mix fat and flour, you have a roux. Okay, so this is not exactly the same because you usually cook the roux. But this Just whip it up and it's very smooth and you don't have to strain it later. And we'll just drizzle this in. We don't want to make it thick thick. Just want to make it so the vegetables don't sink to the bottom. Now we'll look at the consistency. And if we want to put all of that Let this come to a boil. It has nice body now. Don't forget we're going to add the heavy cream to this. And you can see how much vegetable is there to, to liquid, which is good. We also have to put in there Right at the end, <clears throat> as soon as it's thick, I'm going to put the peppers, then the turkey. Now, if this is thick enough, we won't add the remainder of the... So in order to get the remainder of this, which I'm now going to use, I'll pour some of the liquid into here, because I can't scrape that out. This way, I'll whip this and then pour it back in there. Therefore, not losing any of that mixture. It doesn't take long to for that flour to cook. So that is good. You also have to taste for <clears throat> salt and pepper. Very nice. Now we're going to put in the remainder of the turkey, which I cleaned off the bones, which is not a bad amount. And put the peppers in there. And like I said, the scallions at the very end when you're ready to serve. You could also, if you wanted to, cook rice in with this. Potatoes, elbow macaroni, but as you see, that's good. Look at it with a ladle. And then we'll add. <coughs> The heavy cream. I don't know how much we have left in here. This will make my wife happy. Anything with cream in it, she loves.
So that's cream of vegetable turkey soup made from leftover turkey carcass and whatever turkey is on the uh, left on the bone. Bring this to a boil and then we're done. Taste now for seasoning. Remember, now it tastes like, because of the peppers, tastes like chicken a la king. That's not a bad thing. Well, what's important now is add the right amount of salt, because the salt will bring out the flavor. And she'll add more anyway later. Me, that's enough. So let's put this into, no I won't put it in a bowl, I'm just going to put it back into the containers as soon as it comes to a boil. Simmer it just for a few minutes. And look what we did with all the leftovers made at least two quarts of soup. Take out the heavy cream and it's healthier. And then, but then, the heavy cream gives it a nice creamy flavor that everybody likes. I think I'll leave it in here because we're having this for dinner later. So I'll just shut this off. But you should know how much this makes. So we'll not waste the film, but I'll just list what it makes. What is nice to see how it looks in a soup plate. There you go, leftover turkey cream soup, hope you enjoy.